Okay, question 12. So, I'd say we have this inner product. It's defined like that. Inner product, we have the inner product of two complex vectors. Then they say now there's a new inner product on the vector space of all smooth, which, and smooth apparently means infinitely differentiable. Real value function time at interval 0 to 1. Read the definition on this question as follow. So here's the definition of this new inner product. You have two functions defined at interval 0 to 1, the inner product of those two functions is the integral from 0 to 1 of the functions multiplied by each other. So I've got to show that f of g plus a didn't basically show that it's linear, which is something that the, the inner product of the, and the, the normal inner product for vectors does satisfy. So we're going to so we look at the f of g plus h, sorry, f and in, the inner product of f with g plus h. So that must be the integral from 0 to 1 of oh, like f times g plus h, but then you can just split that up, right? You have f, it's the integral of fg plus, plus fh, but you can split those up, and gh, and then that's inner product of f and g and f, inner product of f and h, g and h. Oh, f and h, yes. Okay, so that's going to work out like that. That's cool. Let's do that. Put that neatly. 12.1. Um, so the inner product of f and g plus h equals the integral from 0 to 1 of f of, we're using t, right? Yeah, doesn't really matter, but f of t, g, oh, no. Then here we have, the function is g plus h, right? g plus h at t, dt, that's the actual function. The, the thing is that that function is equal, that g plus h, that function g plus h, it's the same as, if you do g of t at t, it's the same as g of t plus h of t, okay? But now this whole thing is the same as if you do f of t times g of t plus f of t times h of t, and then there. But now that can be split up into two integrals, one which is just the f of t, g of t, dt, and the other which is F of the f of t h, f of t times h of t dt, and each of those things are by definition what the inner product, the first one is the inner product of f and g, and the other one is the inner product of f and h, which is what we wanted to prove. Okay, so the next question, 12.2. Let m and n be two different positive integers. Show that those two functions are orthogonal i.e. that the inner product is zero. So uh, for vectors, it's certainly an inner product is zero, that means they're orthogonal. So here we've got to prove that the inner product of these two things is, 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 is zero. So the inner product of those two things will be the integral of sine pi mt times sine pi nt, right? dt. Oh, from zero to one. Okay, well, the product of sines there's some trick formula for that, right? Um, I think we have, we have, for instance, that what, cos of, cos of, mm, you know, we have the formula that says cos of x plus y is cos squared x, no, that's not what we want. Yes, it is. Sorry, I'm writing it wrong though. There's that trick formula that says cos of x plus y is the same as cos of x times cos of y minus sine of x times sine of y. I can never remember where I showed on the minus sine score. Is it minus cos x is y or what? So just check that. So if, if y equals 0, this would be saying cos x equals cos x cos of 0 is what? Cos of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. So yes, it would, it would work out. So this must be the right formula. Okay. Um, how is this going to help us? I mean, that's not going to... Oh, you've got to use the other one as well. Yes. You've got to do cos x minus y is the same as cos x cos y plus sine x sine y. Then you have to... We want to get the sines, so we have to subtract them from each other. So we have cos x plus y minus cos x minus y. We'll do that the other way around. Cos, to 
get the right sides, x cos x minus y minus cos x plus y. That gives you, so now the causes cancel out, but the sines doubles, you have two sine x, sine y. Okay, so this whole sine thing is actually the same as this whole integral then will become half integral of cos, and then x was pi m t, and the y is pi n t, and then we'll have minus cos, and then the same thing, pi m t plus pi n t, okay? So this, this little thing in the brackets becomes what, m minus n pi t, and here we have m plus n pi t. Now, m and n are different. That means that the m minus n is not zero. Why is that important? If it was zero, we would have integral of cos zero, but cos zero is one, so we'd get an integral of, of, of one, which is not zero. Yeah. But as it is, what we have then is the integral of cos, well, cos of m minus t, some integer times pi t, and the same for the other one, m plus n, some integer times pi t. Okay. Now, the question is, well, how does that help? I mean, cos is not zero. Cos is not zero. Um, cos is not... Oh, we, we should evaluate the integrals, yes. Okay. So the integral of cos is like minus sine. So we're going to get sine of... Yeah, we're going to get sine of things that have um, factors of pi, and so those are zero. Okay, that's how it's going to work. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, so go to our point two. So we're looking at the inner product of sine pi m t and sine pi n t. Okay, and that is it's the integral defined as the integral from zero to one of sine pi m t times sine pi m t dt, which by that trig formula we worked out is actually the same as a half zero to one of cos pi m t minus pi m t uh, minus is it minus or plus? I'm just going to check this. Cos x plus, we have cos x, we have cos x minus y has the, the sine as a, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Sorry, round out, e yes. Minus cos pi m t plus pi n t dt. Okay, that's the same as a half times the integral from zero to one of, now we have cos, um, pi m minus n t d, oh yeah, minus cos pi m plus n t dt, okay. So we know that m minus n is not equal to zero because originally we assumed that m is not equal to n. So that means we can, we don't, that means that's not just, you know what, let me split this into two parts, just out of interest now. Okay, so if m is not equal to m, then we integrate this in the normal way. So we have half, and then we're gonna, ha we're gonna have a minus sign, right? Uh, but over pi m minus n, of course you can't do that unless the m and m different, yes. Sine pi m minus n t, um, extra minus sign there. And here we have plus, plus a half times one over pi m plus n sine sine pi m plus n t, okay? 
oh, this whole, but this is a, a, a this whole thing is a, a, the definite integral from zero to one. And the point is that whatever t is, oh, no. Ha, okay, so you have to, have to evaluate the integral, okay. So, so this now, this, 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 this thing is, this line is okay as long as m is, m minus n is not equal to zero. Let me just put it over here. M minus n is not equal to zero. Um, so here we're assuming that n is not equal to n, so that's why m minus n is not equal to zero. Okay, so we do this integral. What happens? Okay, so when t is first of all, we, we first of all we have this thing, this uh, minus one over this minus one over two pi m minus n, that constant factor there. Then the sine pi minus n, when sine it's going to be what? So it's going to be, when t is 1, you have a sine of pi m minus n. When sine is 0, when t is 0, you have sine is 0, which is just 0, right? Okay, the next term is plus, now we have 1 over 2 pi m plus n. And then we have sine, when, 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 when t is 1, you have sine m plus n, and when t is 0, you have sine of 0, which is 0. But now we have sine of sine of pi times an integer, and that's just 0. Yeah, sine is all 0 integers. So that equals 0 as sine pi, put this, as sine pi x equals 0 for x an integer. Okay, so that proves that this inner product is zero. I'm just interested to know, though, out of curiosity, what is the inner product when m does equal n? So when m when n does equal m, the same analysis would proceed until you got to where you did the inter integration, right? You did the integration of. We use in the integration we used. Um, the fact that m minus n was not zero, but if m minus n was zero, we would, at the front, we would be integrating, we're integrating cos pi m minus n t, actually we're integrating cos of zero. But cos of zero is one, so we'd be actually just be integrating one. So, integrating one, times by a half, so we would have ended up with, the so integral of that is, Okay, and then the cos, if m equals n, we'd have like been creating cos, instead of m plus n, this could say 2 pi n, right, t. So we'd be integrating that instead of what we were actually integrating. So when you integrate that in terms of t, what do you get? You get a half times t minus, what's the integral of cos 2 pi n t? It's of minus cos 2 pi n t, it's, did I make a sign error? The integral of sine is cos. Yes, I should not have had a minus here. That should be staying plus. This should be, say, minus. It didn't affect things because everything came to, because everything was zero, but that's the right signs for there. Um, cos 2 pi n t, the integral of that is Integral of integral of cos is is minus sine. Um, no, sorry. Sine differentiates to cos. So here we just have sine two pi n t. Oh, sorry, you got it. One over two pi n sine two pi n t. Okay. And then that's definite integral. So from zero to one. Okay, now the signs will still be zero because you have multiples of two pi and the sine is zero over two pi. So 
So that bit will go to zero, but the beginning you'll have you'll have half, it'll become half. Okay, so the inner product is a half when the n does equal n, which is interesting, because if you think you could make this set orthogonal by multiplying each of those vectors by, I guess, the square root of two. Anyway, that's not actually part of the question. The question was simply to show that those things, to show that in the case where m doesn't equal n, you get zero, so they are orthogonal. Um, is, that the, is that the end of the question, 12.2? Yes, okay.